Good uh, afternoon, everyone. This is the, I think it's a, are we March 16th mm -hmm. um, meeting of the JCPC and seeing that we have a quorum, my, the first thing I need to do is make sure everyone can hear and be heard. Um, and so I'll just call out names as I see them. Alex? I can't hear you. I can see your mouth moving. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. Ra? Here. Mandy? Present. And Pam? I'm here. So Jennifer emailed, but this is her uh, once a month conflict with the time slot, which this time slot actually seems to have been a problem for several people, but, and I haven't heard from Irv, so we're missing one person. Um, and Sean, you requested, so I'll ask you to lead off. And today is really when we turn to uh, what what are we going to say in our report, um, either in terms of recommendations or changes, or uh, with a focus on. So everyone knows we. If you looked at last year's report, or those of you who've been with us, we focus on the coming year, but then we can also be talking about. It is, we are part of the five-year plan too. So to the extent we have observations that we want to raise about the five years, we can in the document. We don't have to, but we can. So Sean, go for it. Thank you. Yeah, so exactly uh, what you said, Kathy, in terms of the goal today. And if there are any other questions that come up, um, I anticipate we're gonna have at least one more meeting, maybe two. So um, if there are any other questions that I can't answer, I can bring the, those responses back next week. Uh, in the packet, I did put some FAQs if you had time to take a quick look. I tried to add the questions that have sent, been sent along that I didn't think were explicitly answered in, in a meeting already um, and put responses to those. So um, if there's anything you think was missed that you want a response to, again, send, uh, let me know now or email me after. So I sat down with Paul to just kind of go over the discussion so far, the presentations. You know, he's been at several, several of these um, several of these meetings and so he's heard the conversation as well and so based on that um, we wanted to convey some changes that he might look to make anyway that you might want to consider um, and some of those are things that you've already discussed to an extent so I was going to go so, through those now. Pam? Pam are you going to ask about minute taker? Or yes. what? Okay. I was. <laughs> so I actually everyone here has taken minutes I'm willing to take minutes but the way I'm going to take them is I'm going to watch the tape afterwards. Okay. Okay, so um, okay. Irv, Irv has not taken minutes yet, but he's not here, so I can't assign get him, it. Get him next week. Okay, okay, go for it. All right, so I'm just going to run through. There's like six things that we discussed that um, changes he would uh, look to consider or have you consider. Um, so one that you have talked about, and I think we're in agreement, is delaying the snow plow, uh, the two hundred thousand dollar snow plow, uh, sidewalk snow plow. Um, I think we, you know, here in the discussion and here in Guilford's presentation, I think we want to look at alternatives uh, before committing to such a large uh, purchase. Um, so I think what we would do is push that out a year and that'll give us time to kind of reevaluate. Uh, number two, there was $35,000 in there for uh, school vans. Um, that wasn't for a new school van. It was to cover overages for previously approved school vans. Uh, and Kathy, you asked a question about this. Uh, we have the we still have money in our cost escalation reserve from last year. Uh, we've used some of it, but we haven't used all of it. And we have enough there where we could use that to pay for that thirty five thousand dollar project. So we could just pull that um, completely off the plan. And it and it makes sense. We want to use all that money up before we uh, request new money. And just, just so, um, let's see, Pam wasn't here last year, but we created a fund knowing that prices were coming in higher. Yeah. And so I had, we didn't discuss it yet, but I said, did we spend it? And so no, John we, was saying, I guess used, the answer is no, we no, didn't spend all of it. Yeah. We've used some for DPW vehicle. We've used um, uh, some for police cruisers. And there's a few other purchases. We're kind of waiting to see what the final price comes in at. But there's, uh, we, I think we've, used about 30 to $40,000 of it so far. Um, so there's room for that 35 to come out of there for the schools. Uh, so the third thing was, uh, we were looking at the police cruisers and the, and the schedule, and um, we think this should actually be a three cruiser 
year, not a four cruiser year based on the last couple of years where they purchased four uh, cruisers. Um, and we've talked to um, Scott and he was fine with reducing the request for this coming year down to three. Uh, and it would be three for another couple of years before it goes back up to four. So that would bring that item down from 300,000 to 225. Uh, the fourth, uh, I met with Ray from Recreation, and I think you all heard his number one priority is the top dresser. Uh, and so talking to Paul and Ray a little bit, um, we would be comfortable pushing off the irrigation system project a year and replacing that with the top dresser, which I do have a project request for him. I'll put it in the packet for today. I just forgot to do that, that we updated for that top dresser. Uh, the fifth one is uh, looking at the unexpended balances and some of those interior exterior improvement articles, um, especially the balances that are three years old. Um, we would be comfortable reducing those requests somewhat. Um, we we're thinking reducing them by twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars each, both the ones at the school and the one at the town, um, because it does appear that there's some prior year money still available. And then the last one is the uh, there was a project in there, and I can pull up the the plan if it's helpful. Uh, there was a project in there for APD HVAC. Um, and I think I had mentioned this when we first went through is $65,000. And I think we're going to need to do that sooner than JCPC will allow. Um, and so we would look to fund that project through one of those interior exterior improvement buckets that have been set aside in the past. So we could just pull that one completely off as well. Uh, that one's really sort of a critical project that we don't wait on. And I think that is it. Oh, and the last thing, um, and this was raised, is the school bus. So the electric school bus, if this committee does think that that's a, um, a direction we should move in, we talked about we right now is just the net cost of the bus in there. It's not the full cost of the bus, and we would likely need to appropriate the full cost of the bus. Uh, so if, if this committee does think that's a, a priority, I think we'd look to pull from old capital to fund that extra piece for the town um, to cover the full cost of the bus, pull from old capital. And then when the grant would come in, that would close back out to old capital um, as opposed to taking this year's capital funds for it. Um, and that's it. Um, I, Mandy, go ahead. And cause I have a reaction to the set cause I think you just got us to a balanced budget. <laughs> I think you and I were going to ask the same question. So, Sean, what's the balance on this with all of those changes? So let me um, let me do that while you guys deliberate a little bit more. Um, I think the other thing, especially since Paul's here, is that we have heard a lot of interest in doing even more for roads, if possible. Um, and so I don't know. I, there was no. Uh, scheme behind that where it gets us to a zero. Um, so I have to update the numbers real quick to see what it looks like. But um, I think we, if there was funding left over, one of the things we're thinking is that roads would be a, a logical place for it. But I'm so, going to update that now. So can I, I'm going to ask one question while you're updating and then Paul on roads. Um, on the electric school bus at the very end of the meeting, um, uh, we had a public comment that it's possible now to lease these and there's a company who's been leasing them with some experience in the state and and I looked them up after that they actually have experience outside Massachusetts and inside so Sean you said we had met with them I don't know whether they got a full proposal but if we like the idea of electric school bus but really want a thorough ex, ex exploration of this other option um where do we go with that so we're not read so and so i have no idea whether that's half the cost or you know a quarter of the cost and would we have to commit to one now and two later so i have no idea what the leasing you know what kind of commitment the company would want from us but there's in their when i went on their website they have a few places where they've been doing this for quite some time, not necessarily, there's at least one Massachusetts, but there was one, I think, in Maryland. Um, they're also leasing charging stations. They're trying to make it easier to electrify the fleets. Um, and someone found a niche. And uh, 
So, so, so that's just, that's more of a question. Like, I don't know where I go with it. Cause I don't know, have any idea whether. Yeah. I think we're, if we're going to look at something like that, it's not a this year kind of thing. Um, I think we need more time to evaluate that. So they haven't done a proposal for us. Um, I think Rupert alluded to um, still being some concerns around operations. So we, I think we need to meet with them again and get them in here to actually give us a proposal. Um, again, the, the model sounds appealing, um, but we haven't seen numbers of, of what they would charge for the leases. And I think regardless, if you do a lease, it's still going to increase the number quite a bit when we get out to year six, year seven, year eight, when all the buses have theoretically been converted, even if, if that's even possible uh, to support our operations, the, the annual payment is going to be quite large. And what we've also seen is you have to replace batteries when they start getting that old. So it's, you know, do you do a battery replacement or just buy, buy a new bus at that point? So um, I think we need to see the model and what the numbers look like. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that it's going to be something that's not I would expect that it's going to be a large increase from what we currently spend um, annually on school buses. So we just have to be prepared for that. And then, so just then I'll let you pull it up. But um, so then is our choice either this electric bus at that price or a diesel bus rather than a first explore because the urgency is such that we can't do without a bus? Yeah. So that was my takeaway from what Rupert says. They need a bus. Um, pretty much every, you know, nine out of 10 years or eight out of nine years. So, um, okay. yeah, if, if we were not to do, uh, do that bus, then we would look to do a diesel bus instead, which would be, a, uh, like 120,000. And there aren't hybrid buses, I gather. Uh, I think there are some, I haven't, I'm going uh, to get off the electric bus, but it, it, <laughs> no, it's it okay. felt like I, it felt I, like I, I didn't have enough information to, even yeah. think through what a recommendation would be? Yeah, last time, you know, several years ago when we were looking at the fully electric, there weren't good hybrid options at that point. Um, it does seem like the technology has changed quite a bit in the last four or five years. So there could be hybrid options that I'm just not aware of. That would be a question I can ask Rupert. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm almost done updating this. Give me one second. So, Alex, what, what, while he's updating, let's get anything else. Um, and Paul's here, so we should be making good use of his time, Alex. Yeah, I'm just keeping on the electric bus because I feel like that's a very large expenditure. And as is so often the case, one that we're having to make a decision. I mean, in an ideal world, we wouldn't be at the point where we need to purchase a bus. You know, we could do this full study and we're not there. So um, I guess back to, and I don't know whether we ever got this answer and if we did, I mean, if we as a town are looking at our overall carbon footprint right is this where we spend an extra three hundred thousand dollars you know the one something versus the 400 something because certainly school buses idle a lot and certainly i imagine like so i don't want to take what i think i know i would much rather know that these spew a ton of carbon and this absolutely makes sense versus spending that money elsewhere i don't love buying another diesel bus but just because it's the easy, right? Just because it's what's in front of us doesn't mean it's the right decision. Like, right. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't feel like I have enough information to decide if this is the right place to spend that 300,000. And I think maybe the answer comes from Stephanie in terms of like, what's the biggest bang for our buck knowing we have to buy this bus? A bus. <laughs> yeah, I can, um, I can touch base with Stephanie and see if she can give us a more Let's give us give this committee some guidance on you know what's in the car what's in the plan and would there be better uses of this money and would this committee decide um again we need to we need to get a bus one way or the other so it'd really be the difference between the 125 that we would need for the a diesel bus and the 370 that's being requested so you know that 250,000 or so is what you know is this the best way to spend $250,000 um so I'll I'll touch base with Stephanie on that and try to send something out to the group Okay. I mean, for me personally, I'm, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, I don't pretend to know which carbon choices are the best. And we actually have somebody who does know that. So I'm comfortable, whatever Stephanie goes personally, like, so, so to go I, so. And I'm ready to share whenever you guys are, we can go through the rest of the questions, but I'm ready to share the, what the chart looks like with those updates. Mandy and Pam, did you want to comment on the school bus or should we go back to, yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, while we were on the school bus, um, I, I share Alex's concerns. Um, when we look at just even on our facilities budget, the energy sustainability improvements that we started are 200,000 a year. And this school bus, if we didn't appropriate it within vehicles, would use more than that just for this one thing. So I think we really need some help from Stephanie um, to see, you know, if the extra 250, this is where we should be putting it, or would, should we be doubling, essentially doubling the energy sustainability improvement fund for the next year, right? Because that's what it would do um, in, in some sense. So I, I think we just, I would want to hear from Stephanie. Pam? Um, I had a general question, and that was um, we had the discussion about capital reserves and the stabilization fund, and I needed someone to remind me why we do not show anything in the stabilization fund going forward. I thought I thought the intent was to to continue to build up capital in that for our, for our big capital projects. Um, somebody... Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Um... So we have the ability, if this committee chose, and, and it is something Paul and I have discussed, um, to do a contribution to the capital stabilization fund directly. So if you didn't want, if if you didn't think the pro, if you thought there were projects that we didn't need to do or could be delayed, you could take that money and put it into the capital stabilization fund. Um, I think what we know about roads is sort of the the offset to that. If anything you do there means you're not putting it into roads. Um, the other way, Pam, that sort of the the thought process behind that capital stabilization is that that's where all of our any money we didn't expend at the end of the year from our regular budget um, would go into that capital stabilization fund after making sure some other things are where they need to be. Um, but that's how it's been built up so far is by um, any end of year surplus on the revenue side or the expense side uh, would go into that capital stabilization fund. And was not necessarily part of our 10.5% set aside for right. capital? Well, and one year, Pam, when we had the big dip because of COVID, we we would have had almost nothing in capital if we hadn't pulled in right. some reserve money. So we brought in, you know, so there's an ability for stabilization purposes to say we still needed to do something um, because we were trying to protect uh, operating budgets. Right. We did. We did, We're not trying. We did protect right. operating budgets. So. So Paul, did you want to um, come weigh in? Um, that I thought it was very healthy, help, healthful, healthy and helpful. <laughs> what what Sean came in with? Yeah, no, I think your the your advice is going to be really valuable. I think you know Sean did a good job at pulling all this together. I think the conversation you had on the electric school bus is spot on. The only reason we're really talking about it is because we got this grant, but the the expenses have gotten much higher, and I think it's really you've asked the precise questions i think we are still looking at how we can get more roads done that's what i'm hearing a lot about and if that's if you're in agreement with that that if you want to talk about that um and however you want to get to that and i think the other component of the school bus conversation that i'll try to get some additional information on is the existing school bus the e-lion um there's hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the plan for that bus as well. So if you add the 370 for the new bus and then 150 for the E-Lion, you know, we're up to about $500,000. Um, and what I still don't have a good picture of that I have to talk to Rupert about is whether it makes any sense to continue to invest in the E-Lion because we've had so many issues with it. It hasn't been on the road for months. Um, they don't even know if it, the issues are the batteries right now because they're having other issues with, with the vehicle. Um, that bus was originally purchased with a, a Department of Energy Resources grant from the state. Uh, so we have to look at sort of the rules of that grant, but it has been several years since we got that grant. I think it was back in 2016 or 17, we got that grant. Um, so it, it could be, you know, it may be time to get a new electric school bus, but to not invest in that old bus, right? Uh, because that bus has been problematic and, the, and these new buses are supposed to be more reliable. So I'll try to get additional information on the status of the e -Lion. And, and Sean, that's the 150,000 for battery. Yeah, right? that's the 150,000 for batteries. Yep. And it, and it says, I think it says batteries other, because again, they don't quite know if it's um, what the issue, there's something else going on with it besides the batteries. Alex. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask a question about, you know, if we do decide to take, you know, whatever excess funds there are 
and put them into roads. Um, I guess my question is um, roads versus sidewalks, if we're talking, you know, $200,000 or whatever it is, is there more bang for our buck in sidewalks than there are for roads? Like, is there a balance yeah. to that? So I, I, we, I think we use roads and sidewalks interchangeably in a way, and but I think we, but we do separate them out in the JC in the capital plan. So we could, however you think you want to divide that up, would be good advice. All right, Kathy, it would be helpful if I show you what the yes. what it looks yep. like now. All right, so um, I've marked in red where we made changes. So. Reduce this uh, facility bucket down to 150 and remove the HVAC replacement for the server communications room. And then we have similarly reduced this from 100,000 down to 50,000. And again, the reason being that there's old articles that still have quite a bit of money in them. Uh, one one thing I didn't mention, but I just forgot to write it down. Uh, another recommendation of ours was for the field equipment, instead of doing all the phases in this first year, just do the first phase and do the second. There was a phase two, um, do that next year. So I've reduced this down to 230, which was the phase one that uh, Guilford proposed. And then I've increased the second year by the, the second phase. Uh, here's the top dresser put in uh, from recreation and then the irrigation systems pushed out. And then we've pushed this the sidewalk plow out. Um, I've put in the 200,000 uh, share, the, the other, the grant share for the electric school bus, but it's coming from other, so it's not pulling from uh, the, this year's cash capital. Taking out the special advance because we'll pay that from the cost escalation reserve fund and then reduce the police cruisers down to 225 uh, to remove one of the cruisers. And so when I do all that, um, it gives you funding this year for 67,874 that you could do something else with or recommend something else. Or or reject some of those changes if you wanted to reject. So where them. where do you show over under? So I'm just uh, right here. Um, so the new total um, when you look at our resources and subtract out our expenses, we get have four sixty seven available. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Almost five hundred thousand. Yep. That's correct. I'm reading that right. Yep. And does does what you did? And then I see your hand is up, Mandy. I'm just trying to make sure. I does what you did help us all in the next two years or does it leave us in this it, it hurts a little bit because we push some stuff off into right. the next year we um, okay. again the sidewalk plow will come back to um but that was pushed off the irrigation system was pushed off so those uh, made fy25 a little worse okay Pan, uh mandy's hand is up is it helpful if i stop sharing mandy uh, no i just have to find my on mute okay. button. <laughs> um, a, a couple of things as you were going through that, you talked about um, switching out the irrigation for the top dresser, dresser um, mm -hmm. but that that line then made me notice that the paving is still listed at 20,000. And I think our conversations for the Cherry Hill paving were like, they didn't think much could be done at all for 20. Um, so I think we still need to talk about that one and whether that number is appropriate and how much of the parking lot we would want to do because it sounded like that was going to be more than 100 yeah talking to, like that. i think ray and guilford have um you know they just come at it from different perspectives so i think the hundred thousand was to kind of do the whole thing over again um and that was an estimate that ray got from dpw i think guilford was saying for twenty thousand we could make a lot of improvements to that space but it wouldn't be a complete redo of that parking lot and so yeah that's a a discussion for this committee whether you want to do sort of the smaller get us by option for a few more years or sort of the complete overhaul of that parking lot okay and then while while we're talking about this um there's a lot of requests here um that go to benefit the region either substantially or probably at least 50 percent of the time whether that be the buses um, or the field equipment, 
or even the chargers that would not even be installed on town-owned property. And so I'd like to hear from Paul what type of cost-sharing agreements in purchasing and operating would be negotiated before we essentially hand this, buy this equipment and stuff that is going to, you know, sort of be used by an entity that is not town controlled. Um, and then also with the DPW field equipment, one of the things we heard was that there's a lot of operating costs that come with that. And so I'd like to hear from Paul, um, is the additional person that Guilford recommended going to end up in the budget? Because if it's not going to end up in the operating budget with those increased costs, I would be um, wary about buying equipment that then requires our DPW to make decisions on whether to use that or do something else and what they would give up to do this. We heard Guilford say, well, if we buy the equipment, we would use it, but we'd give something else up. And so I'm not sure I would be in favor of giving something else up. So I'm curious whether your operating budget's going to include increases in DPW staffing and consumables to cover mm -hmm. that or how that would be covered through region agreements and all. So we're still working through the operating budgets and you know, the departments have put in their requests for additional you know, expenses and staff as they see fit. You know, we don't have an agreement with the school district in term, in, or the regional school district for maintenance. I think a lot of the stuff we look is it would benefit both sides of the equation. Um, and, you know, we've never really um, calculated the the shared cost uh, because it used to be under one operational entity, uh, and and that that person sort of managed it on both ends, and sort of, it was pretty informal in many ways. Um, we could move into that. We just we've never really collected the data to really accurately say this is on your side of the ledger, this is on our side of the ledger. You know, we utilize their pool and um, things like that, and in their fields for certain things, but. Sean, do you have any, you, you've been yeah, on Yeah, no, sides. I think that's, I think several years ago, it felt like a pretty even swap of services, especially when the town would use the, the middle school for town meeting, for example, or, you know, I don't think there was any payment for that. And it was a significant chunk of time using a facility owned by the region. Um, we don't do that anymore, obviously, that that was a major kind of exchange of value that no longer happens. Uh, so it probably is worth, you know, we're getting to the place where it is worth to sort of reevaluate, you know, what are we getting? We still do get some benefits on the recreation department side of use of space, um, but it's not what it used to be, again, 10, yeah. you know, five years ago when we had town meeting. So I'm going to call on others before I call on myself. So Pam, and then Laura. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for that list of, of suggested changes between Sean and Paul. Um, most of those, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I was in a position to be able to say, well, do they really need four cruisers? Could they go with three? So I really appreciate it. But that's exactly one of the questions that was coming to mind. Um, and, and pushing off the snow plow is, I think is really smart. Um, uh, let's see, the, back to the school buses, just briefly, it seems to me that I would love to put our money into a, a more permanent electric solution. And it doesn't feel like it's there yet, even though it's a really good thing. It's a feel good thing to get moving on electrification, but it just doesn't feel like we're there yet. And I'm really happy to put that off um, and not, not spend that kind of money on this. Um, and also just the phase one of the field equipment, Mandy Joe's question about the staff to operate, that was a really, really good question. Um, and I also would at some point like to make an addition to the list rather than a subtraction. And if that's appropriate at some point, let me know. Yeah, I think now's the time. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I've, been, I've been looking at um, sort of overall thinking that we're spending you know, two and a half million plus on equipment. Equipment um, devalues very quickly. It starts to depreciate the minute you take it off the lot. And I was really hoping to see a stronger presence for street plant, street tree planting. 
uh, it is something that that increases in value rather than depreciates. And I think it's it's um, it's just a huge tangible pro climate change climate action that um, so many more people can participate in. I just think it's a really smart move just to to keep the the funding for that going. So I was going to say, <clears throat> I did reach out, not following protocol, sorry. I just reached out for the answer um, of, of what it would cost to plant a year's worth of trees. And the answer is about $40,000. And so that was, that was uh, 20 sessions of, um, or seven sessions of 20 trees. And each tree is, is nearly $300 a piece to buy. So that was very quickly, you know, 39,000 plus. So um, I wouldn't mind keeping say 10 in for tree removal and trimming, um, but, to, but to augment that with um, 40,000 for the tree planting, if we could. And just so everyone knows, it's a line item right now for 20. Right. It's not, it's, it's, it's in there just for a smaller amount. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'd love to see that maybe go to 50 total. So for Rob? I just uh, wanted to go back a minute to the uh, this number 67,874 and just one I was just wondering how how much could we put toward roads because when we were listening to the presentation a few weeks ago I, it was kind of surprising to me that the that we were concentrating on just the downtown area the sidewalks there and around the North Pleasant and Amity and those streets. And because, is it because in other parts, parts of town, residents aren't speaking up or, I mean, like the potholes in South Amherst are terrible. I mean, and I didn't want to bring that up because I don't want to be another whining resident in town, but it seems to me more than trees at this point or some of the other things we've been talking about, the roads should be a priority because driving on these streets in our cars, they're not helping our cars at all. Kids biking on the roads, it's not helping them at all. Sidewalks aren't, aren't that great in some parts of town. So I was just kind of wondering how much of them, if, if that could be part of the discussion. That's all. Thank you. Paul? Okay, so I'll, I'll do the last. So we are we do we don't just do sidewalks downtown. Uh, we do we we've sort of focused around schools. Uh, so the sidewalks uh, uh, near the middle school and high school have been done on on Gray Street and maybe Taylor Street. I think we also did. Um, you know, next year we got a grant to do uh, sidewalks along Belchertown Road and East Amherst. Um, so that's where the you know we tried to, and we did uh, McClellan Street last year as well, which is downtown. Um, and I think we did some in North Amherst. I forget exactly You're going up there. Anyway, so they're, they're, it's throughout the town. They, they do get graded to a certain extent. Um, the uh, And I think you're totally right on roads. The roads are blowing up. It's not just our community, but it's really evident to us when we drive through. the through. And so um, that's why I think we've heard a lot. And that's what matters a lot to a lot of people who, who are in the town who may consume very few town services other than just driving on the roads. And so, you know, trying to get as many roads as possible to be paved. Um, the issue for that, and I, you may have talked about this with Guilford, was, you know, there's three paving contractors in Western Massachusetts. So all the cities and towns and the state are all vying for the same group of people. So getting them in the pipeline is what we what our goal is, as many as we possibly can. Um, so, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of putting more money into roads and trying to get as many done as we can. We're, we're for the first time sort of getting into some side roads as opposed to doing the major roads. We've done Northeast, Southeast, Bay Road, uh, Meadow Street. Um, and so this year, the first ones will be Pomeroy and West Pomeroy. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of demand for roads, right? Uh, in terms of the trees, you know, we borrowed um, there's an initiative in FY13 to borrow money to plant trees. That was $600,000. And then we've been spending that money to pay, to utilize those funds over the last 10 years, basically, because of this bond. Um, 
And I think we've spent that money back, but we've also had to pay the debt costs for that. So I don't like the idea of borrowing money to plant, plant trees over 10 years. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. Um, so, uh, and if you talk to Alan, I think um, his biggest need is taking trees down, not planting. In fact, he's been struggling with finding places to plant trees. You know, he's going around saying, can I plant a tree in your yard type things. So it's not necessarily, people love trees. It's a, it's a really feel good thing. His biggest challenge is removing trees. And that's where the money has, that's the most expensive part of his operation. And that's why we actually in our in the budget we said tree planting and removal because we know there's a demand for planting. You know, if you if you want, he would welcome as much money as you want to put into it. But it's not as it's not as uh, nice to hear. But there are a lot of trees on the public roads that he really feels need to come down, um, and that's much. You know, he, he needs a, a a chunk of money to be able to do that every year. And I think Paul, one thing you you know you shared with me sometimes the trees actually contribute to poor road conditions, um, right? By not allowing the roads to dry out uh, yeah. when, they're, when they're too close to the so, road. So I think we hear a lot about Heatherstone and that's one of the things that they've identified is that if they're going to do it, because the trees over, where the trees are close to the road, um, the trees, it, it doesn't dry out. So the, the water gets into the pavement, it freezes, blows up the pavement. And so DPW wants to brought, you know, take away the trees. We all love the trees because it looks so beautiful, but there's there's this, you know, um, there are certain areas where there could be more space. I think on uh, Henry Street, they ran into a lot of trees that are, they really couldn't pave the road with the trees where they were. So that all costs money as well. Um, so I, I'm going to call on myself, Mandy, if you don't mind. And then, so uh, I had another area, and and Paul, while you have it here, the uh, body cams for the police. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's we know there is or has been grant money for that. And, you know, the answer on that is we would apply later. So when I pushed, could we start with fewer? The answer was all 50 people might be need to be out on the same day. That's why 50. But I'm thinking, but yes, there might be a few days like that. But could we start um, with something significantly less? And and get some experience with it. And I didn't want to name a number. Scott Scott threw out maybe 40, but it was a big ask um, in terms of it. And I understand why they're asking for it. So um, uh, the body cameras were 250. So I was looking for, could we start with half of that? So it's a question and I was gonna do it on a, if, if we don't have a good answer, I was gonna suggest it as a question back to you all to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that if grant money becomes available, then we could buy more, um, you know, to try to think of it that way. So mm -hmm. it was that, and then Scott talked about the console that it's desperately needed, but it wasn't completely clear to me. And it may just be, I was fuzzy that there's something available that we can buy. It was more that the one, the manufacturer's going out of business that has our current. So I just, that sounded like we absolutely need it. Um, so I wasn't going to question that one. So I had that. And then my last is I think there is at least one and maybe two of the resident proposals. Um, and the one that we, Pam had an ad for trees, but there was a $20,000 offer as a match to put a bike station in where the town came up with the other amount. And this is one where the staff, Stephanie came in and said that was a location that was on the list in any case. So it happened to be unlike some of the others where it didn't fit a plan, it seemed to fit a plan. So and it's it's at the low end. So I didn't I didn't know. And I have I think we need a longer discussion on resident proposals on how we want to handle them. But of the variety of that one seemed to come off on a why wouldn't we do it if there's there's matching money. So my first was on body cams and then yeah. on what to do about the resident proposals. Yeah, yeah. I think um, there's on the body cams, I think it would be why you could easily ask the chief and us to um, come up with an implementation plan. I think there are a lot of, a lot of pieces to this and say, if you were to roll it out over two or three years, mm -hmm. what would that look like? Um, and again, going out for, for um, grants, which we would do, 
There are also other costs that go along with that. There's, you know, there's collective bargaining issues. So there's operational impacts as well. Um, I think the union wants these. So, um, but there almost all the, every community that gets them, there is a cost that comes along with it um, in terms of operations for, for this change of work conditions. Um, okay. In addition to the capital piece, so it's a it, so even if they even if we appropriate the funds, we wouldn't be able to implement. There are two other things that have to happen. One is the council has to approve the surveillance policy for implementation of the of the body cams, and the second is we have to reach an agreement on the collective bargaining side. Um, okay. In terms of the bike station, we Sean and I were just on a call a little bit ago, so we just we just want to make sure that the um, we want to move with caution on expanding the bike program at this moment in time, I think. Um, and one suggestion there, Paul, could be, you know, that could be something that comes out of um, Stephanie's sustainability money. Yeah. Okay. So it could be either you increase that a little bit, that gives yeah. her the flexibility to do that, or the advice is take that from the sustainability money. Um, yeah. But that that's one of the types of things that would come out of that bucket of money. I think the console is one that they are very concerned. It's a, it's a, it's the guts of our entire public safety system. I think that's why they really prioritize that. Um, even and I think they just like get out ahead of it, make sure it's done before the. If the company says we're going to go out of business in five years, that makes me nervous. <laughs> you know? Right. Okay. Yeah. Or three years. Yeah. Hey, Mandy. Yeah, I I want to get back to the paving issue. I, I think I ask this every year, as Guilford says, and then you reiterate, there's only three paving contractors, and we're constantly trying to add money to paving. Um, but if there's only three contractors, they have a they themselves also have a limited amount of things they can do in one year. And so what's the upper limit of sort of contracts that Amherst can contract out to these paving contracts in every year? Because I don't think it would be wise to fund more than that because it would just sit there, right? And so what is that number? Are we close to that number? Are we not close to that number? And then if we are kind of close to that number and it's also not certain what we might get from fair share, and I know the governor's budget gave us basically nothing for transportation in that, so I'm going to recognize that, that we've got to hope that maybe the legislature will change the uh, recommendations there, but um, given that right now it looks like there might be 400 or so thousand dollars that we have to expend to something um, with the changes and next year's budget is overspent by 400,000 or so, would it be better to, if we're running up against that number of for roads, would it be better to spend down some of next year's projects and move them into this year's projects? to free up money next year if the paving contractors do that or or something like that instead of putting it all into roads if we're not going to be able to spend it for roads and i don't know whether we can or not but but since we've got a lot can we move some projects think about moving projects into this year that have that are in next year that that's certainly a, a that's certainly doable i think the um the business capacity of the contractors to meet the needs you know it's if they feel like there's business out there for them to get another crew up and running, then they probably would do that if it means new, more business. We have done some roads ourselves uh, in terms with our current crew, and I just don't think we do as good a job as um, as, as the private contractors do. Uh, we're just not, we don't do it every day, they do it every day. Um, so I think that if, you know, we, we just wanna put our oar in the water, the bigger contractor we have, the more attention we get. So getting stuff out there, I think, is, is to our advantage. We can't compete with the state when the state has a boatload of money and they put it into uh, on for bid, like on 91 or on Route 9 or something like that. That gets that they pay top dollar. We don't we never are at that level. Yeah. Um, so your question is, would it make sense to hold off on putting money into roads this year and have more for next year? Is that basically the theory? Or partially that or or think about some of the stuff that because next year's budget is over budgeted right now think about moving yeah. some of that into this year instead of putting all of it into roads so that we're balancing sort of all of them since this year's budget has that million in roads already 
I mean, it's a, it's setting priorities. And I think if you said this is priorities, I would put the roads money this year because even if we can't spend it this year, we'd be able to, we knew it was going to be there and they could be contracting that in advance if that was a priority. And, and we do anticipate that our town bid for roads will be a large one this year um, because we've been putting extra money into roads when we have an opportunity. Um, so it, it should be a large bid this year. Yeah, the council appropriated additional funds last year. Alex. Thanks. So just switching back gears to the body cams. Um, again, I think it's kind of like the, the electric bus where we have three members of the town council who are intimately involved in that discussion. But I think that there are a lot of ramifications um, around the use of body cams, obviously. But even I worry about if we're only rolling out half the body cams, like, I don't know what that does to the union contracts, yeah. who gets one, how do you decide? I mean, so it it seems not the appropriate place here for us to be deciding we're gonna fund 50% or full because I think there's just too many issues that stem from it. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, I so I'm not really sure what this group should be doing or what's appropriate for this group to be doing around recommendations relative to that request. I don't know what to do with that, that's just, yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100% because I think that's why we would ask the chief to come in with an implementation plan. I think he wouldn't do, I mean, imagine a, a, you know, a, a traffic stop with someone that didn't have a body cam on. They say you purposely didn't, whatever. We, right. It needs to be uniform and sort of organized that way. I agree with you. Um, Pam, uh, do you yeah. want to speak Just a to quick, quick yeah. follow-up on the, on the body cam. So is it possible in that implementation plan um, that we established the the HR the union rules first and then and then go buy the cams. So I, we, I missed. Uh, do what first? Just establish the protocols. Establish you know what will happen when it gets rolled out. So we spend this coming year in, with an implementation plan. The union gets to weigh in. HR gets to weigh in and establish it all before we go purchase. In other words. Put off the purchase for a year. Yeah, so we wouldn't purchase until we had every everything in alignment. Um, but I need to know if the council is even going to put the money. I don't. We don't want to go into negotiations and say, "Oh, the council really doesn't want to buy them in the first place." So the first question is, does the council want to buy them and set some money aside, and then we go to the next stage of here's how we would propose to use them. Is the council agreeable to that? And then we would say, "Okay, union, here's how we intend to do them." Let's talk about it because it's more about implement, implementing at that time. We have to impact bargain this. Um, so, but I'm, I don't want to negotiate with the union if, if the council is not going to appropriate the funds for it. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just ask, this is a question. Um, we share police cars. Not everyone gets a police car. Do are body cams something that's attached to your body, and then then nobody else ever uses your body cam? So it's it's a question on a on how these things work because little handheld radios, um, you know. Yeah. So in terms of an implementation plan, I think that makes sense. So that yeah. we think like how would we use them, and uh, not that two people have them on their body and the third who's standing next to them doesn't. That wouldn't be a view. Right. But I want to go just back to the roads question, Paul, while you're here. I think this is, I think it's actually pretty critical. Mandy, this is, um, I'm out there giving talks about the school, um, the elementary school, and people are saying, what about the pothole in front of my my house. And this is North Amherst, South Amherst, and for our, you're absolutely right, it's neighborhoods. It's not, you know, it's not just the downtown. And each person says, we have the absolute worst roads. And then I think, I want you to come up here and, and, and drive on this one, because everyone has at least one they can point to that um, you 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 should, if you're smart, you slow down to 10 miles an hour and really are, drive it carefully because you don't want to, mm -hmm. you want to anticipate the whole. So I, I think it's a really good thing to bulk up because I'm worried when I look at 25, 26, 27, and 28, we're dropping down to 500,000 on roads in the projected five-year plan. And so in the interim, I'm hoping that we can 
do what Joe Comerford and Mindy were asking is it's chapter 90 money, double it, triple it. You know, let's get some state funding of roads in the road intent, you know, so it's not just out of our property tax dollars. But so I'm looking in out years can we get more help? And as you said, fair share didn't have anything in roads for it. But I mean, just really thinking, um, and I noticed a couple of towns said that uh, it, it's they're not beginning to keep up. It's not just the Amherst of the world uh, on this. So um, I love the fact that miraculously there's 500, 400-ish thousand more to put into roads. Uh, I think that's smart. Um, so I'm just going to weigh in on what I'm hearing and and when for all when you said people said should I be coming to town council saying this more or is it okay to just say it in a district meeting you know like where where should I voice my concern about my road um um because it's out there I think as a major issue townwide um so I just wanted to make it clear that I don't think this is just in our heads it's uh it's a very tangible uh Mandy. Yeah, um, I'm going to do body camps and then I'll respond to the road thing. Um, I think my recommendation for body camps would be to fund the whole thing uh, for now and then go through the process and see and and put in our JCPC recommendation that we recommend that there become, an, you know, that the, the, the full funding go in, but um, that with that come to the council, the surveillance tech requirements, right? Because the funding can't be used until those are done. Um, but if those take less than a year and get approved, we'd want the funding already in place. And since we generally have one year to do that, and if the council doesn't then approve the surveillance use or gets the, you know, an implementation plan that is different, we can always reappropriate some funding to some other source or maybe um, figure out a way to make that money a little bit more fungible um, so that we know it's going to that. But if the implementation plan is only half of it, that we don't have to go through a reappropriation process to use it for something else. So something like that of maybe think a little more flexible with it, but at least keep the whole amount in there in case that's what goes through the council and the council decides to fund it all pending all those other steps that need to go through. For roads, one of my concerns is next year's budget does only have 500,000 in it for roads and is already 400,000 in the red. If this year's budget is 400,000 in the black and we put an extra 400,000 into roads, we're putting an extra 1.5 million in along with the chapter you know, 90 money um, state aid. Um, and then we're going from that down to 500,000 and you still have to cut 400,000 from next year's budget. And so is it better to have a steady type of contract going out? Um, or is it, you know, because in that sense, then maybe moving projects from FY25 into this year to balance that out and be able to then find more to maybe up to a million next year. But if we up to a million next year, next year's budget's already almost a million in the hole. Um, you know, and so would it be better to move it and keep steady the state con the contracts going out for road funding at approximately 1.8 million a year or is a contract for one point well it would be 2.2 million or so for one year and then for 1.3 million the better way to go i don't know but i i, I gotta trust you guys but that's part of my concern is we're looking at adding to roads this year and then cutting nearly a million for what we can do next year instead of more keeping that money steady and using some of and, and moving projects from next year to this year because there happens to be more money there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the idea is to so with the chapter 90 money we can assemble we can hold that over easily and then and let that a lot of it will be depend on how the DPW can manage. Can they prepare roads? Can the engineering department get enough roads designed to go out to bid? Are the contractor? Are, are, do we have enough staff to over oversee the construction of the roads? And then, are there contractors out there willing? And they sort of watch the market. I think at DPW they sort of say, "Oh, they're 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 really eager for our business now." The, the people, you know, the, the contracting companies will visit them and say, "We're ready for your bid on this or that and the other thing." Um, that's an indicator. 
So my instinct is to, you know, even if they don't use it this year, they'll carry it over to next year. And yeah. it's all, it's the same thing. It's road, it's road money. And this uh, is likely a summer 24. The money we're talking yeah. about in this year's plan is next year's road money. Um, yeah. The money for this summer was last year's road money. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah. So, and I, you know, I think when we look at out years, we do worry about, are we going to have enough money for roads? We need to be investing more heavily in roads because we're getting less bang for our buck, quite honestly. Even though the dollars are the same, it's it's not going as far. Pam? I had a question so related, sidewalks and roads. Um, in the number that we have for public works, highway, road and repair resurfacing and sidewalks around town, um, does that include the new multimodal dual use um, section of road in North Amherst? There's a, a, a complete replacement of sidewalk from, um, let's see, Meadow Street south toward toward the university. And it looks like it doesn't, it's it's a small section. It's It's maybe, I don't know, 500, 600 feet in length before it reverts back to the existing sidewalk location. Is that completely grant funded or was that part of last year's sidewalk expenditure? What, what stretch of road is it again? It goes from the intersection of North Amherst, the light on the, it's on the west side of North Pleasant Street and it goes 600, maybe a thousand linear feet of, of length, but it's a eight foot wide, dual use walking biking which then narrows back down to a four foot sidewalk yeah so we're hoping to be working with the university on their pedestrian study that would extend up to uh Good. the north amherst intersection and because that, that's a major you know, that's where we had an uh, an accident a, 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 a pedestrian killed and it's dark and so the university is concerned about that and it's something we are working with them on so we, we want to get it a, a real study done and the university is interested in this as well. Okay, so this this funding isn't necessarily going toward that. Or Not until we get, EPW has done a plan for North Pleasant Street, but, um, and it's a pretty expensive plan, but it's a pretty high priority in terms of the number of people who walk on North Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that plan's sitting in TSO right now, right? If the North, um, I'm not sure, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. And one That's of the right, because we didn't have money to do it, and so it was sort of put on the back burner. And one of the questions was input from people who live on the street, but also why isn't UMass pay, paying for a lot of these? Uh, since that's the, the, use, the use and the safety, it, this is really a student. It, it's not just a neighborhood. It's, the, it's a major transit route. Yeah. Um, so, so last but not least, in that same intersection area, um, given that you know we're talking about putting town funds, these are not these are not chapter ninety dollars that we're talking about using. Um, the issue of safety that came up actually through those um, resident requests, safety on some of those streets um, is important, and I wonder if we only do speed bumps uh, typically when a road is resurfaced or if there are in fact ad hoc operations to improve speeding on roads that are not being currently and actively repaved. Yeah, so there are a lot of requests for speed humps and other uh, traffic calming measures. And I think we don't have a really good pathway for, um, and I think what we've talked with TAC about that as well in terms of how we're going to manage all those requests, because a lot of requests came in through through this process and through other processes as well. Um, and and DPW I think it would be would welcome some kind of process for how do we prioritize? Are we prioritizing or not? Alex, I don't know if either Paul or Sean remember the number because I don't want to say the wrong number, but um, as we're talking about roads and sidewalks, uh, Guilford, I don't remember which JCPC it was, but one year gave us how much it cost to pot, to, re, to repave one mile of road. And it 
really puts into perspective <laughs> the dollars and why we're looking at the dollars. And I have the number in my head, but I'm afraid I don't want to be wrong. Um, so I don't know. If million. He gave, he told us a million. I mean, that's what I remembered was a million, but my husband says I tend to like, you know, double the number and say, now, isn't it affordable? <laughs> so that's what I remember. A million right. a mile. Yeah. It's like a million dollars. And that was, and that was before the market has gone so, through the road. Yeah. So I can, for it, the real, no, we paved the section of Bay Road from the Belcher Town line to Hulst Road. It's at eight tenths of a mile, 4,000 feet. It costs us our entire chapter 90 appropriation, $850,000 basically. Yeah. Um, and that's, we, that's the testimony Lynn gave to the uh, Senate Ways and Means Committee uh, on Monday. I mean, it's, it's, it's very expensive and now, it's, interestingly, the complaint now is about speeding on Bay Road. <laughs> <laughs> speed bump, add speed bump <laughs> on Bay Road. But I, I just think it's helpful when we're talking about putting 450000 into roads, because I think people see these large numbers and don't always necessarily understand how much road 450000 gets you, which is not much. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I think it'd be good, I mean, if you were going to allocate some funds Divide it up and put in the sidewalks as well, because I think that's a high impact dollar amount as well. It's it's sidewalks are also very expensive because usually there's tree work that goes along with them. And it, so, Paul, I don't know how long you were planning on joining us, but this has been incredibly useful, uh, valuable as we turn to this. And so I think one recommendation might be as you write up your capital, your thing is use these numbers, you know, use this fact of you get eight tenths of a mile of a road for this, you know, so it's that it's a message out to the town or use it in your talk your, when you when you do the capital that it's mm -hmm. not it's not for lack of trying or dollars. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that chapter 90 money has not begun to keep up um, much less address uh, road intents. Jo, jo Comerford talked to, in her talk to the council that we're, when you get outside of major cities, we're road intents as opposed to cities that have uh, buses, you know, have so, rapid transit, that we're road intents and that the legislatures don't think of that, you know, and the wear and tear on our roads. Um, so, so I don't know, Paul, were you planning on staying for more or? I wasn't. I have another meeting if that's okay. Yeah, no, I was just worried about, you know, I was allowing you to leave gracefully. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Pam. Yeah, I have a question uh, that goes to schools. So when I look at the department total for schools, um, I wonder, is that when I think of the tax dollar distribution, you know, roughly 60% goes to our schools? Is this nearly five hundred thousand dollars part of that number, or is this actually in addition to the percent that we say we spend on schools in town? Um, it depends, sort of, what comparison you're making. So, if you're looking at operating budgets and what percentage schools are of operating budgets, this is not um, part of that calculation. Um, if you looked at sort of educational spending as a whole of the town, it could be, again, there's not really, try to think of what reports would have capital and operating spending all combined into one, and I can't think of any. Um, and I'll say, you know, it, it varies year, uh, wildly year to year, um, how much is spent on different locations. So the schools might be a little bit lower this year, but some of that's intentional because again, there's sort of a wait and see approach to Fort River and Wildwood. Um, in terms of what to invest in those those facilities. So um, so I think this year, the number, I think, I don't know if, if this is your observation that it's a little bit lower than what you might expect for the schools, but I think in other years it's been higher. Um, so it really does, de does depend on the schools. Or sorry, it really does depend on the year and what projects are being requested. Because if you look at some of the out years, you'll see some large, um, some large projects coming in the not too near future. Mandy? So the answer is we don't really know if this is part of that. It, it's not part. I think the number you hear is usually operating. What it's, percentage it's operating. of operating, and it's and it's not part of that. Yeah, it's operating, Pam. And even within operating, you know, one of the big, I think, a peculiar way the town does its accounts, 
you don't necessarily see fringe benefits even in operating, you know, because they're pooled. But on for DPW, you don't see these vehicle purchases and you don't see roads. You see DPW operating and then you see capital. So capital. these they're they're in two, they're because they're so different, you know, police is there's operating and then there's police cars. <laughs> so we don't you don't often see them in a way other than taking out your calculator, like our, adding it's like it. Our, it's like our military spending. You don't really know what all the pieces are. Yeah. The other thing I was going to add is the school's line at 474 is missing the two vehicles too, all the vehicles that are right. on it, which yes. almost doubles that line, number one. And this is only the elementary school side. The regional school side shows up on a different line of our capital, um, which is just part of, I don't even know what it's, where it shows up, Sean, but the yeah, so it's it's projected. part of some of the debt, and then it's something else, I think. Yeah, so it's three seventy two for FY twenty four, is what um the regional schools gave us. So region comes through as an assessment. So they they that was the assessment number they gave us for FY twenty four. But Mandy's right. We broke out vehicles some years ago to kind of group vehicles together. So um yeah, when you had the school vehicles in, it increases that number quite a bit. So um, do we want to, we've got about an hour left, a little less than an hour left. And I'm just looking, there is. Can I ask a question, Kathy? What, yeah. Whether, is anyone um, opposed to any of the recommendations that I listed from Paul at the beginning? I'm just thinking about when we start getting towards a recommendation, so, um, any opposition to those changes? I, I will um, ask everybody if anyone had any opposition to any of them, and I wrote them all down. Um, I did not. I thought they were good recommendations. Um, so I, uh, all the way, all the way down. And then you left open the question of that produced the change in the spreadsheet that you showed us. And I think you need to send that to us so we have it. Sure. Uh, then it's the now that we have something that's not in deficit what do we do with that money um so did, does anyone else have anything on a didn't didn't disagreed with the change mandy so i didn't disagree with the changes per se but i think in our report to go along with those changes we all talked about that electric school bus and needing more information from Stephanie mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'll i bring it up again. I, I would like some more information about the field equipment and, you know, just cost sharing, but also the operational costs and will that, and maybe a recommendation that if it's not in the budget, what are, or maybe we should talk about if the operational side isn't going to be budgeted, what do we recommend to do on the capital side that should go into our JCPC? So I think for the, for the field equipment, right? Like if they're if the if DPW is not going to get the operational costs they need to do the field maintenance, do we still recommend buying the field equipment, or do we recommend something else instead? So, Mandy, you're adding. You said here's a potential add to the list. You know, yeah, just, yeah, no, uh, it's. I don't. I don't disagree with their changes. I think though, with okay. those changes, there's things we need to mention in our recommendation. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And we had a good discussion on electric, but I, I will, you know, I'm going to draft some things once we have more, but um, we had a good discussion on electric school bus with some suggestions um, and the DPW field equipment um, as well. So Pam? Yeah, same same comment on the, bu on the buses. Um, the other two things that I had that were potential uh, retrieval of money is the uh, the two the two very small paving projects at the um, at the child care center near Wildwood and then the um, Cherry Hill. I walk through the the Wildwood site several times a week, and the the parking lot has one really big pothole and two small potholes, and it's really not otherwise in very bad shape. And it occurs to me that our wonderful new hot box is just the tool we need for um, fixing those things and making them somewhat uh, somewhat better for quite a while until that 
entire area gets repaved as part of a bigger project. Same thing for um, Cherry Hill, although I'm not as quite as familiar with it. Um, it seems like if a an area of you know entrance to 10 feet into the parking lot is solidified and and you know made made better that it would reduce a lot of the issue for a while without having to spend the twenty thousand dollars or the fifty thousand dollars to do those parking lots. No, I had that I actually went out and took pictures of the Cherry Hill parking lot, Pam, and had the same thought on to the extent I understand what a hot box is, once we stop, when we can get the snow and ice off of it, there are a couple that look like just someone has thrown gravel into them, you know, right. literally not attached. Um, but then the rest of the parking lot is not in horrendous shape. It's not, you know, it's not smooth. Uh, and Sean, you you go to Cherry Hill, but, you know, I actually said, okay, there's one there and there's two here and hot box should be able to do it. So just, you know, trying to have, Guilford or whoever does this do a really good assessment. Can we do a better job of filling the holes and not having it um, shred uh, with the first car that goes over it um, would be good. To the extent I understood what a hot box is, that's what it's supposed to be able to do. <laughs> so any other, um, so that was the daycare. I had it on my list too. So I have, so I think the suggestion, can I can I raise, are you finished, Pam, before I, yeah. so on the resident proposals, we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven this year. Um, and the one that Paul addressed, because I asked about it, is that Stephanie might well have enough money in her sustainability budget for the bike share, and you need to uh, evaluate the bike share program. The others, um, my question is, what do we want to write up on the, the resident proposals? And I think, Alex, you voiced a um, concern that we should have a policy on speed humps and where should they go and a priority list rather than uh, somebody uh, sees resident proposals are open right now. Um, and Pam then suggested that, you know, one of the things could be you could identify places where there are the cutoff streets, you know, where you are avoiding an intersection and say, how many of those do we have and taps. So do we want to put in that um, we would like a policy to be developed and have these go first to TAC? you know, for, for an assessment, because right now they're coming first to Sean, who then gets either a DPW, if it's that staff person, or um, in the case of the bike share, Stephanie, and Guilford seemed not to have read any of them. So they may have gone to him, but, you know, he wasn't focused on reading them. So do, do we want to write something up? And I can draw, try to draft something to not say we're open to resident proposals, but we're not going to take any um, because there's not an overarching plan. Um, so just something something to voice, there needs to be more work on the resident proposal side. Um, Kathy, are you, are you saying you def for the resident proposals to prohibit sort of road improvement projects? No, no. I think if we had a process that speed humps are at, you know, roads are, roads since crosswalk, are, are roads part of it or not? So this is what I'm asking, are roads part of it or not? If every time a road or a sidewalk or a crosswalk comes to us, we say, is this part of the big scheme or not? And we turn it down, then people shouldn't be encouraged to submit them. Um, so then I had a similar one. We had one nonprofit this year doing something that might've been equipment um, in Amherst Neighbors. Will we take resident proposals from nonprofits as opposed to something that's town -wide. it's got to be something the town owns i think that was the issue with that resident request was that it was for equipment that they would own and it was for their purposes um, and so then we should put it in so i'm just thinking in the write up what a resident we, i think it did i explained it to him but it does say okay. that it's got to okay. be public benefit um Okay, so, so Kathy, one thing I was thinking of. So I just had a question. Did anyone have any of those that rose to the top of wanting to propose them? Um, and I picked out bike, bike share just because there was $20,000 on the on piece. Yeah. So Sean, you can. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is if 
I agree with you. The road projects coming here doesn't seem helpful. If this group valued those projects, one thing you could propose, it'd be a new project, but one thing you could propose is sort of a general uh, road safety improvement bucket, you know, with some amount of money in it. Um, and then there to be a process to allocate those funds in the future that might involve TAC um, instead of this committee. And so that way, you know, we do that with the transportation plan, for example, we just put sort of money in that transportation plan and then it gets allocated towards different projects. Um, it could be that this committee decides, we think that there's, there's definitely a need for safety, road safety improvement money, but we're not the right body to determine which projects and that there should be a broader plan developed and then funding. So it could be a this year, maybe a future year thing um, where this body just puts money towards that specifically. Um, or you just say it comes out of road money. Uh, I mean, it could come out of road money too, but. Okay, so both Mandy and Alex have hit their hand up on, and it, it doesn't have to be on this, but maybe we could speak first to this. Um, yeah, no, I, this, this one's I've struggled with, um, but you know, I don't think JCPC is the place to be saying which roads get done, which roads safety wise get improvement and what they should be, you know, and so I appreciate the resident requests, but, you know, once the town moved to, I, I don't even know what it's called, but basically scanning the roads and then ordering which ones are in worse and making their decisions based on sort of the conditions of the roads, you know, that, that was a, that's a good process, right? And, and relying on resident requests solely to get to the front of the line, I worry just like Alex does about knowledge on that. But I think maybe these requests that came or the system we're using to do capital requests from residents to JCPC could be transferred to a road safety requests to TAC and let TAC talk with Guilford about figuring out what roads need safety improvements and what the priority is and prioritize them and then use that to come to TAC to JCPC and make it part of the annual capital requests through that process like they do with roads. We get the bucket of money and they decide what they're going to spend it on. Um, I think that's the most appropriate. I'm not sure I would be ready to put a blanket bucket in there this year for that without a process in place, but I think maybe our capital request process can just be transferred to TAC almost with it related only to road and sidewalk improvements and all um, things like that. So yeah, so that's what I, my thoughts on that. Alex? Um, so just for those of us who don't follow every machination of TAC and all of the various things. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm loath to create yet another like bucket, another committee, another, you know what I mean? Like, like right now, if there's a problem with your road sidewalk or whatever, there is an online request to DPW and we have a process. And so um, if tax the appropriate place, that's great. Um, so I, I guess just, I, probably echoing what everybody else is saying is is if we could as a town come up with a process that doesn't change from year to year and where we could direct people um that would be amazing <laughs> you know because i feel like every like i feel like we're doing a little bit every year but every year i feel like you know people feel like they get the run around and it's certainly not anyone's intent and i just don't know whether we have so many committees that that winds up happening and so i guess Echo Mandy Joe, I'm I'm not ready to put together sort of a, a bucket of money for a process I don't yet understand. Um and, and part of that is maybe me not understanding sort of how TAC worked well enough to know that DPW has its money for roads and sidewalks, but TAC is making specific recommendations that they should have a bucket of money for themselves rather than it being part of DPW's bucket. So I guess I I would want to understand a little bit more like are we just creating more buckets or does that really make sense? I, I just don't know the answer, so. Okay. We we can certainly write it on the, we, we, we had actually a couple of good paragraphs last year, but it's come back to us again that we still haven't solved, the, as you said, we, we might've tweaked it, but we didn't solve it. Um, and people thought, because I misguided them, that they should go and talk to TAC and they were saying no staff is reviewing these, TAC doesn't have a role in them. And so at a minimum, we just need to know um, 
you know, uh, I don't think we have a, a speed hump bump policy out there on when and where and how. And so TAC would have to come up with that or TAC working with DPW would have to come up with it because, uh, yeah, so Pam, so we can write something that just says we we need clarity on this, which is sort of what we wrote and, and yeah, have, but, it not, I'd, have it not changed like here. Yeah. I'd like to, to say that, that we would like to have a policy developed and I don't know if it's TAC, if it's TAC with DPW, if it's TAC with DBW and TSO, but a, a policy on, on um, traffic safety areas and that of our budget for DPW roads and sidewalks that specific projects are listed each year by DPW that address some of these specifics. And so that the DPW um, proposal to us is not just, you know, the, the $100,000 million dollars for road work, but there's actually a subset of that that, um, that addresses it because the, the, uh, the scanner um, pavement condition thing is terrific, but it does not assess safety issues. So the speeding on a, on a little side street is just not even detected in that format or that forum. So I think um, having something that documents those and then be able to say to people, maybe instead of a capital request, although I thought that was a really cool idea, it, it's ending up falling mostly into these buckets of traffic safety. I don't know what other have been proposed in the past, but um, it's, it's mostly roads. There's, there's been a handful of non-road um, projects, but but it's you know 85 percent roads so far. So it sounds like it sounds like those really ought to be directed to um, be matched up with this priority list. That's it. Thank you. I'll put my hand down. No, and we had a mix this year because we also had the your speed is and flashing lights, you know, at, at an intersection by a child piece. And just for people, I was told by our DPW to give up on the road I live on because it's a state road. And the state lowered the speed limit and put a flashing speed, your speed is sign and moved a speed limit sign because uh, they came out and looked at it. It was not safe, you know, so it was around safety, Pam, completely. Um, but it was a state road, so our town couldn't do anything about it. The, but the, a very nice state engineer uh, decided to be responsive, which they aren't always. Um, so Alex, yeah. Yeah, I just, so I mean, again, I'm sorry about that, not to be a dead horse, but so um, tax role, right, is advisory committee. So right now they are an advisory committee around safe streets, sidewalks, complete streets, et cetera. Right, and they advise the town council who then makes those decisions? I think it's town manager, isn't town it, Mandy? Who then makes those decisions. So again, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, right, we have an advisory committee. Are we then changing them from an advisory committee to a committee that actually is able to execute their advice through giving them a bucket of money? Or like, again, I'm, I'm just trying to understand what we want to. So, so Alex, you're asking, a big question here, and I think we can ask it because TAC would like to know the answer to that. You know, in terms of they 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 think this is their role, but they write a report and and who does it go to? Does anyone listen? Because they they do have a you know a various things they've worked through, and DPW is part of that. Um, so it would be good to clarify that. And now we have this town services and a TSO council committee. You know what? There is a, I would say there's a lack of clarity, even though in some minds, people's minds, it might be clear. I know the chair of TAC does not think it's clear. So do we know who, so again, like I don't, yeah. I feel like every year we write these really great recommendations, but like, do we know who's going to provide that? Like, it would be nice to have in our recommendations an understanding of like, who can provide that clarity rather than- It's on, I think it's in the town manager's Purview. list of things that he's working on. I know. I don't know if the charge has been updated since the form of government has been changed. And I think that's, I know, been talking with town manager. It's on, you know, it's, it's again, 
it's on the list of lots of things that would need to be moved forward. So um, I think including that in the recommendation again is the the right way to go um, to provide clarity around where these things go and what role TAC plays in all of this. Um, just to add to that, I just I guess what would help with clarity is what is the maybe you mentioned this, Kathy. What is the relationship between DPW and TAC? Wait. D DP, if you ever go to a TAC meeting, DPW is a big presence there, but um, there is some concern that they may or may not be listened to and they may be talked to, you know, in terms of is it, is it, a, is it a discussion or not? Um, so, you, but, 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 but they, but they, they are part of the deliberation on sidewalk policies, yeah. crosswalk policies, walkways, pedestrian, you know, they're, they're part of those conversations. Guilford is the staff liaison for TAC, kind of like I'm the staff liaison for this committee or for finance committee. Oh, okay. So it is a, it is a team of experts and not just residents like us on a committee. I mean, I'm sure some of you are experts, but. Um, well, the, the, what are you trying to say? <laughs> no, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm not an expert on any of yeah. this stuff. I so could connect the, your it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. edit your reports. The, but the that's tech all. committee has people on it that not everyone had to be an expert, but a lot of them came in with a traffic, a planning, uh, you know, a, okay. a, that kind of a background, which made them in, which is why they were interested in this you know they they worked a lot on bikeways on pedestrian um in in their regular life not just in their town service life so it has a mix of those of that type of depth um okay. and the longer anyone serves on it the more they know okay thank you <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. sean i wasn't doubting your your no, no, i know i know exactly what you were saying yeah. So I so the process in the past has been, um, and so at, at Pam is new, is that I take a stab at drafting something. Uh, and you all see the one that we did last year. Um, Alex has been a volunteer to make my poorly constructed sentences read more clearly or to make sure we didn't actually talk about that. I don't remember having that as a recommendation. You just stepped stepped over the, the bounds here. Um, so I think with the discussion we've just had, um, I took a look at the way we did last year. I, some of it, some of the document, because we inherited an earlier format where the old JCPC pre-town council was weighing in on everything. And now that we're really just an advisory to the town manager, we don't have to repeat everything that's in the town manager's report to us, you know, in terms of how much here. So I think what I do is draft the first section as our recommendations, you know, and capture today's discussion on during the last meeting we we accepted and then we wanted we make and in addition, we make these recommendations and then put this discussion of resident that we need a further discussion on the second page. And I can have that ready for next time. So what I need to know is the question that was raised. There was one voice, Mandy's, on uh, not wanting to put the found money of $450,000 into road slash sidewalks. Um, not wanting to put all of it in or questioning whether we should put all of it in would be the other way. I thought it was a really good idea to recommend that it all go into roads and sidewalks. So I can write it with a uh, town, with town manager um, advice, or, or I can say that we think this is a good year to be doing that because it can be taking the money. We, we allocated a million dollars. The council did of, um, free cash, we had extra and we gave it to roads because of the backlog on roads. So this would be a big pot of money. And it sounded to me like Paul said that some of the companies could put on another crew and they would 
respond because Amherst has a big ask. Um, so I like the idea of putting whatever that bottom line is all toward roads. And then the question was on Pam came up with trees and Paul quickly had a way to fund my bike station idea because he said, Stephanie's money has enough to do that. We don't have to make it a freestanding piece. So does anyone have any, or does the group have any consensus on how to write the piece on the, uh, I didn't write it down quickly enough, Paul, Sean, but it was, you know, $450,000 or whatever happened on that bottom line. Yeah. To put that into the road slash sidewalk budget. And, and Mandy, we can come back at it. I will write it up with, a, a, you know, you're questioning, you know, do we drop down again next year? Are we making a mistake putting a vehicle off into next year? Because then there's even less, we have a problem next year. We do, we have a problem over the next several years. So it's not just next year. We, this, this is not a balanced five-year budget. This is, a, and it's particularly not balanced if you look at it because DPW's debt service is coming online. Um, and there's an assumption that that's going to happen. That's what throws it off for uh, 26 and 27 in particular. Um, that makes it a problem. So, Mandy. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to oppose putting it into roads and sidewalks. Maybe just some sort of um, acknowledgement that if we do so, you know, we still have to be careful about the out years that are not balanced and just think you know think about if we do add it to roads what might we have to not do and push off even farther because we I, I don't know how to word it but that that's sort of part of my concern is are we going to next year be facing no roads and also cutting projects okay. <laughs> Yeah, if if the state doesn't move on any level, yes, this is this is yeah, and and is that then the wisest thing to do this year versus pay for some of those projects this year? That that's all. But I'm not going to oppose roads. Alex. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I would say that um, you know, I mean, I I guess Paul's comment about the fact that any money that we put into roads now, even if we don't use it, will roll into next year. So even though it looks like the money for roads is dropping. It allows us to not have it drop. So while I, I hear Mandy Joe, I have to say that I've been on JCPC long enough to know that that's the way the out years always look. And then magically they don't necessarily look that way when we get to next year. So um, I don't like pushing things off, but at the same time, we know we always need roads. And so I like the ability to sort of maintain potentially that amount we're spending in roads by putting it known money this year that then could push to next year. So I think I'm in favor of that. And did we, do we have a recommendation? Where do we end up around the, the body cams and funding for that? I don't know what your plan so that, is. That's a, so Mandy, well, I'll, I'll say what I thought I heard Mandy. So we, so well, I know we, what Mandy Joe said, but like, is that, is that the consensus? So I, I started <laughs> with uh, funded at a lower level. Mandy said, fund the whole thing and then make it contingent that there is a plan, the, the surveillance thing and polls that the police, that we we're going to trust that there's an operation side of it that decides they clearly don't have to spend all of it. They could spend less if they decide they need less. So that was the recommendation from Mandy that countered my wanting to go lower. Um, so right. I, I guess I just wanted the group. At, at, at yeah, so I, exactly. So I, I, <laughs> I'm i I'm comfortable doing a consensus, consensus through, I don't feel strongly about it enough to try to argue it. So I'd be fine to get to a consensus on how we want it. Word. There are clearly several things that have to happen before we spend the money, including if there's grants that would pay for half of it, that would be great, right? But yeah. And, so, and I, would, I would just echo, sorry, Pam. I would just echo, I mean, I have no idea how fungible the money could be, but I think there is something nice about putting the whole funding up just because we don't know the ramifications with contracts of not fully funding it. And then if we could somehow make the money fungible enough to know where the money goes if it doesn't move forward or maybe make a recommendation okay. about what would be the priority of spending if it doesn't go forward i if that's a possibility then i think that's a, a nice solution 
Pam? Yeah, I was I was in favor of reducing the number of cameras that are actually purchased and have them roll out over time. Um, but understanding that there in fact is a deficit the next year and the year after that, that that having having dollars in hand right now, I guess does make sense to purchase it outright or at least make the, the money available. Um, yeah, and just so we do anticipate getting a grant for that. Um, again, the money is there because we want it there so we don't lose sight of it, but we do really anticipate um, going after and receiving a grant um, for a big chunk of the cost. Um, where, and so how does that work then, Sean, on this this fungible? So if if they got half, then then they didn't spend the amount that was so out. If, if we find out that we're, we get this grant, let's say before Paul submits his budget, we'll just reduce that amount by whatever we get. Um, if it's after Paul submits his budget and after it's voted, um, then it would be sort of like old capital that would just not get used. Um, if you're, I'm trying to think when you say fungible, to me that means- Could use know, it for something else, <laughs> yeah. Making the, the, the term more broad so it can be used for something else, right? Um, so I have to think what that might be. Um, but if, if that was the case, then it would just stay there and be used for whatever else it is. I'm trying to look in the out years on the police plan to see if there's something else that um, is coming up. Like for example, there's there's lockers on there for um, the following year and there's uh, so. Because it has yeah. to stay in the police budget. We can't like say, just kidding and, and put it some like throw it over to, to sustainability it's, or something. Yeah. It's not yeah, it's we, we like we like fungibility so it's unlike me to argue against fungibility when it comes to capital but um I think we, we also don't want to set a new precedent the, for something that's that broad well, there's so. in in car video system but that's only eighteen thousand, and you don't have right. it penciled in until two years from now yeah yeah um, but some sort of video systems and then i don't know what this data system is that's quite large um right um the other thing is, you know, like I'll I'll talk with Paul. You know, maybe it's public safety equipment, and if we broaden it to be public safety equipment, then there's a whole bunch of fire uh, EMS stuff that is coming up that it could, you know, be used for that instead. Um, okay. So so we we draft some wording, and you all decide what's 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 indicate code. indicate your intent, and we'll see what we can do to. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, and I guess the, going back to the buses, we just, um, what's the end result here? What did we? Um, I think I think we said that we want the this the electric bus to be more thoroughly assessed. With Stephanie yep. weighing in on, is this the best place to spend an extra two hundred and fifty thousand dollars mm -hmm. for? the bang for the buck. And also some assessment about is leasing feasible and is it economically in our advantage at all? You know, um, whether it's good for one year or good for 10 years, that right now the extra cost is substantial. So Sean, do we have to, we have to leave it in the budget because if it, you, you need it earmarked for, it drops down to much less if it's a diesel. And we know what happened to at the council meeting uh, when we were, <laughs> when we talked about purchasing. A, yeah, a, a one thing I was thinking about for this and, uh, and I'll talk to Stephanie first, but one thing I was thinking about for this and for the batteries is if we don't know 100%, that's what we want to use it for. Maybe we put it into the sustainability budget, um, sort of along the same lines of what we just discussed, where the intent of it is to be used for these things. But if Stephanie comes back and says, no, there's a better value with these other things, then it's still in a sustainability um, funding source. It's still being used for sort of the original intent, which is going greener. Uh, so, because that sustainability bucket is broad enough that we use that for vehicles, for the hybrid technology and things like that. And then I guess your question, and then I want to get both of you, is your question also was spending $150,000 for a new battery for a bus that's failing and has all sorts of quirks. Should we just retire the one we've got? You know, if someone wants to buy it, take it off our hands. Mm -hmm. um, 
it is, I think, an important question to ask because it's good money after a problem uh, money otherwise. Um, so I see Pam, Mandy. Well, I would, that, answered, that answered my question. And I would support, <clears throat> I would support not going, you know, not keeping the old faulty electric bus any longer than we need to, including any uh, equipment and apparatus that needs to support it. Mandy, then Alex. Yeah, I, I wonder if the thing to do is to instead of list the vehicle as electric school bus and charging infrastructure, just school bus. And um, there's a couple of charging infrastructures listed in both the school section and in this section, maybe. And, and then if you move the rest of the, you know, and, and list a school bus at the 125 or whatever it is um, for the diesel, but just list it as school bus, right? But put a minimum amount for whatever a diesel bus would be in there. Move the rest maybe to the sustainability fund. Once we get that information, the charging can go in there. If we end up, I, I do I do worry about replacing a battery for a Lion bus that's been out for so long and we're not even sure what it is when that entire cost could buy the new bus. Right. right? Um, mm -hmm. a, a new diesel bus, right? You know, or or part of X, Y, or Z, you know, if we do retire that bus, in theory, we're looking at two buses, right? Not necessarily one, but um, but then maybe you could justify one diesel at the cost of the batteries and then one in sustainability at something else. So, right. you know, maybe bumping the sustainability up with intent of electric buses or whatever, and and at least putting in the equipment in the vehicle line item, one bus or two buses at the 150 level or 125 or whatever the base cost is for non-electric. And then investigating the hybrid option too. I think if there's hybrids there, yeah. Alex? Um, so Mandy Jo just said some of the things that I was gonna say, but then also, so um, Sean, when you were originally saying the, you know, the seven things that, you know, you and Paul had talked about changing the budget. One of the things you said was um, the net cost of the bus is in the number and we need to appro appropriate the full cost of the bus. And we'd look to pull from old capital yep. to fund the piece from town. And then when the grant comes in, we'd replace it to old capital. So, so what, so, so the number that, so what number's left in this budget for the bus or did we already pull the number? Like, I want to make sure I'm understanding that. So the number in the original plan was the net number. Right. And so what we would need to do is add the 200,000 approximately, um, which I did in that Excel spreadsheet. I'll send you out the, okay. the updated sheet so um, the that has that change. Has the full number, but with old capital. Yeah, you'll see it as two items. You'll see the sort of the net and then you'll see another line item for the old capital piece. Okay. Um, so they'll go together. Okay, so I guess, and again, this is where just like all the moving parts of figuring out where the money is going at the end of the day. So to Mandy Joe's point, if we scrap the one bus, now we're actually looking at two buses, right? And possibly one electric, possibly one diesel, possibly both. Yeah. Like, I guess there's just a few too many moving parts for me to even know what our recommendation is at this point. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't think they're ready to scrap the bus yet. The E-Line, I think what we would say is, or what it sounds like you're saying is, reconsider that battery until you know whether that bus is going to be viable going forward um, and see uh, again we're waiting to get it back and find out what the issues are um and if the issue is something that they say is you know it's it's going to work perfectly going forward um maybe they keep try it again it, it, the funny ironic thing about the bus is it's like the nicest bus to drive so everybody wants to drive it it just breaks down a lot it's like driving a golf cart you know with the acceleration everything you hear about electric cars it's the same with the bus um but it just has all these weird technology issues that aren't even really necessarily the bat. It's not related to the batteries specifically. It's the technology that operates the, the console and the dashboard and things like that. So, um, so I think for both of those, I'm going to bring back hopefully more information next week that might give you clarity which direction to head in. And, and also just what, I mean, in the end, I feel like we're throwing a lot of money at Stephanie, which is amazing, but at the end of the day, like, what is the line item we're putting into a discretionary fund just so we know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So that was my question. So Alec, are we adding another $250,000 to the $200,000, right? 
Um, I want to mention one more thing. If the, the question I had is the charging infra infrastructure was in there, but if for some reason we scrap the E-Lion and we do get another electric bus, we might not need the charging infrastructure. I would hope that those the new bus and the old bus have compatible chargers so for the, charging infrastructure such that the charger that's already there to charge the e-lion would not become obsolete completely um but that might also if if for some reason that that needs to go in the calculation and the yeah. thinking too So it's 2.45. Um, we actually did an amazing amount today in terms of ideas on the thing, and I'll see what I can do to capture it in text on the beginning of a, of a report back to the town manager. Um, so if anyone has any additional, and I'll try to get what's today is Thursday. There's a council meeting. I'll I'll do my best to get a draft done by Monday so I can send a draft out and people can mark it up and think about it, um, you know, and put where I don't get to something, I'll just put a placeholder for something more here, or, you know, to, to do it as a rough draft rather than a complete. And, and Sean, if you can send us the revised, you know, I'm doing this thing. I kept staring at this one, you know, what the five years look like. This is your cover for sheet, yeah. you know, up to the it's camera. Boring. Yeah, but I, I know what you're sending it. You know, and then the five year one, I find those really useful, those tables, you know, as I'm going down to see what did we push off to the next year? What does the next, you know, why is why is FY26 so out of line? And you can see it's because of the debt service that's coming on. It's not that we bumped up something else. Um, it's just we're finally seeing the big buildings start to um, show up. Um, so if you can get us, get me that. So whatever I put in to the cover part is at least more or less accurate um, mm -hmm. on what this table is going to look like. We, I see we've got one member of the public. So if there's if no one else has comments right now, I was going to open it up and see if there are public comments. Um, and there is one member of the public. Um, if you would like to speak, could you raise your hand? I'm not seeing the hand go up. So. Thank you, everyone. Um, and we will, you know, the I said I, I volunteered as minute taker. I'll do my best to uh, capture this and <laughs> as the minute. Um, I took pretty good notes just to, to encapsulize, but you and Paul coming in was a gift to us, Sean, in terms of some things that were already on my list of do we really need this? So, Pam, um, you have a you're you're muted. I was thinking um, that the your report is really by topic. So I know we jump back and forth a number of times on, on various topics, but but certainly it all really centered on just a couple topics. So if that's helpful in terms of structure. Yeah, and and what we did last year, I mean, just to make it simple that we in general, approve the projects, but here are some exceptions or here are some additional recommendations. So in this case, we'd say we got an initial list, then there were visions of it, and we, in general, and then here are some additional comments. So it avoided having to talk about every vehicle and every um, thing that didn't rise to the level of having a long discussion about it. Okay, and then to the extent, and then the second section, um, it, it's up on the web. Um, Sean can resend last year's. And, you know, this is still an evolving document because I worked off of the original, original draft, but the, it gets repetitive in a back part where we try to, at the beginning, just the big take homes of, of that are coming from us. So I'll try to do that the same way, Pam, you know, where 
there aren't that many topics that we're specifically talking about. The electric school bus, the DPW equipment, uh, road, you know, resident being clearer on this. Um, so, so beyond that, we're sort of accepting the changes and I can list the changes that were made. So. Great. And everything is fungible. It is a first draft. So it sounds like, Sean, you know, if we can get to at least agreement next week, then it could move to final with me just sending a copy out with Alex as a reader if she's willing to do it. So you could all be looking at a final without having another meeting, but we can also convene another meeting. We have room for that, Sean? Do we mm -hmm. on the schedule? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have the 30th if we need a, another meeting. Yeah. And so if it gets near enough with suggested changes and then people see the markup off of that, um, we can approve it by, our process has been to allow us to just improve it by uh, reviewing it and sending edit kinds of comments in. So we'll see if that works. Um, Farah? Does this mean we're not meeting next week? No, we are meeting next week. Next week, yeah, Okay. I just, committed to trying to get a rough draft of at least the recommendation section um, to everyone. And I, you know, I started playing with it a little bit of last year on, you know, open, deleting things and saying recommendations here, you know, without knowing what they were and scrapping something. So I think I can adhere to that. So you're going to get a rough draft from me and Sean will give us this revised table. That's the table we're working off of since we agreed to those changes. Um, and then actually you're showing us, Sean, you'll be showing a surplus and we'll be recommending that goes into roads and sidewalks. So we won't have allocated it yet. Right. Okay. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you everyone. Bye all. Kathy, I'll send you the video as soon as I get it. Okay. Thanks.